Hey. Hey. Hello. <laughs> we are live. We are live on Chimwag Thursday. Tim. Oh. Hi. Goodness me. This isn't this isn't like having having a gig, is it really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I'm loud enough because I was just um my speaker's very quiet. So I'm hoping You're that we both quieter. Well, am we'll, I a bit we'll quieter? struggle along, shall we? Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, I'm gonna actually open up my <clears> other <throat> I'm gonna open up my other um, Max. Say what is it? Okay. Yeah, because you you're quite me. quiet to me, but it might I can just always be talk a bit and you can fiddle with stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see. So I I can see that we're actually I've just got a split screen at the moment, so I can see that we're actually on live. Good. So hopefully. Hang on, not sure if I'm on the right page. Somebody's saying joining tonight. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully somebody's um a chap called David that I know knew. I've known David longer than you, which is kind of long like, time. actually well, we haven't known each other that long, have we? So look, let me just check. I'll work it out while you do that. We've known each yeah, other. Yeah, bizarre. <clears throat> Hang on, I will just see. And... Well, no, it was, it was well, four years. 20, 2019? Yes. It four was, years. or maybe end of 2018, I kind of yeah. met you, wasn't it? I think so. I was, Liz, I was talking to you within months of joining our last <gasps> yes, company. Yes, did. Because Charles didn't exactly ask me to be involved when he was recruiting you, but I did remember having a conversation with you on the phone a couple of times we did we did right hang on oh sammy's on as well so the so basically tim just to let you know by the way everybody when you're watching this this is tim evans so 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 tim, we, tim will be coming <laughs> yeah hi tim will be coming out some with some amazing i'm just waiting amazing... for the canned laughter to die okay <laughs> stop no no that's just me that's just me so we've got i can see at the moment we've got three watching but that'll be including me at the moment wow only because so i split my screen so that i can actually see but um i can i can see that we've got we've got sam sammy that um that i kind of met fairly recently she's kind of watching so Hi, thank sammy. you sammy thank you for joining us listen <clears throat> let me know sammy can you tell um, is is my sound okay because we're we uh, tim's quite quiet to me and and i'm quite quiet to him so i'm hoping that my huge mic is uh, is kind of doing its stuff but um but yeah so let me know anybody who's watching then please give me some thumbs up if if the sound is okay actually i'm wondering let me as we're talking oh, no. i don't know whether that's going to make any difference at all no. does that sound any different to you maybe it's mm -hmm. the, is it okay <clears throat> hopefully we're both clear so she's saying we're both clear sounds like Good. sounds Good. like a covid test doesn't it <laughs> Sounds like a COVID test. I shouldn't say that because you've had it, haven't you? Actually, Sammy's had it as well. She had she had COVID. 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 <laughs> sounds oh, like gosh. some kind of sounds like some dodgy bread brand. That one doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> so we both said cheers before we started. Now yeah, I cheers. just have because Rich, my husband, got me there. So you've got some red wine. I have a glue a glass of gluten free stout. So cheers, everybody. And I've not had two glasses tonight. That's Hmm. last week was was a little bit interesting it, i think i'm having a bit of a similar week to be honest it it just it's not ugh, i don't know what's going on so I, but i'll be taking I, I don't know about your kids um we've got half term next week so um yeah, you we have. this week or next we have we've got half term next week yeah one one's away one's with us <clears throat> right okay so yeah so james james will be probably in his room on the xbox for the whole of the week but excuse me i have actually said that we will go somewhere so so rich is lifting a glass of wine here actually so i'll show you what I, you won't be able to see who this is tim but i because we, it just shows facebook user yeah uh, but that that is rich okay nice. and and that's sammy okay so so at the moment the little app that i'm or the little piece of software that we're using called called melon um it doesn't actually allow you to kind of it doesn't let you can't see 
the name of that person. So I, but that's why I've got my screen split. Yeah. So there you go. But listen, welcome, welcome, nice welcome. You. Thank you. We haven't we haven't actually seen each other for is it two years now? Yeah, isn't it? A while, isn't it? <clears throat> so come on, we, we we shall. I'm sure. Yeah. So give give the guys a bit of um a bit of a background to to who you are. Okay. Okay, um, I have known Liz for about four years. I think we worked it out. Um, yeah. Um, my background is in training and development, and I, I did a traditional music training background when I was young. And that's what you do, um, isn't it? Did post production, sound design, and yeah. and, uh, and ended up living abroad for a couple of years in Australia, and then coming back and that. moving around with. Uh, various different training um, and uh, I taught at universities and sixth form colleges and schools and I did everything apart from primary school mm. and then I moved into uh, further education and I worked in, in as a director of centre for five years and lived in Gloucestershire where we had our family, start of the family and really from that stage probably from coming back to the UK and before then I've been I've been uh, coaching. Um, I never really called it that, but that's the main thing that I do. I think um, what I found my way into as a result of working in colleges is consulting in colleges. <clears throat> that's when I discovered my kind of passion, if you like, it became for continuous improvement, um, wanting to uh, improve service delivery. Mm. Um, within a college training environment, you have a, a a judgment called continuous improvement, one of four key judgments under the old Ofsted framework. Oh, don't mention them. I, I ding, researched ding. and developed my own uh, interest in. Am mm. I loud enough? Yeah, am I loud? Am I loud enough? Yeah, 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 you're fine. Good. Yeah. Um, and I ended up uh, uh, working uh, as a consultant. Uh, from about 2011 um, and then worked my way into other training companies and eventually into banking and healthcare and I did all sorts of stuff with a consultancy firm based up in down in Bath. Oh yeah you did service. didn't you? Yeah. Um, and then found my way into uh, man more into manufacturing. Yeah. But on that route, I've done all sorts of other uh, applications of continuous improvement in non-manufacturing environments, mm. which is mm. where Liz and I share, I think, our interest, if you like. We do. We do. Well, there's another interest that we share as well, though, isn't there? Music. Yeah. Music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go on, tell them about the band oh, yeah. that you're in. Because that actually, ho hopefully, Anne, Anne, who was on the Chinwag a few weeks ago, so her, her and her husband are in a band, so she'd probably quite like... I'm sorry to hear that. ...hear this. <laughs> no, 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 it's good. I get lots of musos coming on. Come on, tell them all about your band as well. Yeah, so I'm trying to take it way too seriously when I was young. I kind of reached a point where I could enjoy it, being in a band playing music I loved with mates who I met probably 15, 16 years ago when I moved to Cheltenham. Blimey. And uh, yeah, we play we play blues. We I know a great harmonica player and a singer. We all live within about half a mile of each other. Oh, did you? Um, I, I, I didn't realise you lived so close. Yeah. Oh and, my god. Uh, he, you know, hence uh, kind of our, our our music means that we, you know, we can we can play in a pub and hopefully get people dancing and having a good time. We're ha we're having fun and not taking it too seriously. You know, it's a dad band. <laughs> Hey, we can't even say that we're actually in a band at the moment because there's just we we've not. I know you because you are you out gigging again now then? Yeah, um, we we haven't played since our our singer gave us COVID last. Oh, November. you did. That's how you got COVID, wasn't it? it? Oh, how rude! You know, I don't know. Uh, anyway, we're back on it end of February, and then we play start playing regularly again from about April. But yeah. It's great fun. It's people watching oh, I miss and it. going yeah. out having fun and, you know. We never really had many gigs. We just kind of went, we just used to go and rehearse for, really? for ages. And that was, well, yeah, because 
<clears throat> I don't know. I don't think we ever wanted to take it mega seriously. But I mean, come on, you have to tell everybody about the number of guitars that you've now. Have you actually still got the same number? You know, no. High number of, no. Have you have, have you been. downsized your guitar to. collection? Get out of it. I'm only on. I'm only on six. Five slash six. I Thank think you. the last time we nearly, nearly bumped into one another was when you were going to go and get a guitar from somewhere. I'm not quite sure where. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you, what you like. Oh, blimey. Yeah, out. just things change, don't they? You kind of, uh, you kind of uh, run out of uh, places to, where places to put them all. And, you know, I just, most of the stuff that we do is, is pretty low key. You know, I don't need big amps and lots of gear. So I sort of, yeah, I've done away with it. Yeah. I mean, like I say, we've just, I suppose the, the rehearsal studio we were going to, it was so tiny. It was ridiculous. And you didn't, we didn't want to pass COVID on to each other. So we're all a little bit worried. But anyway, you know, yeah, we're not yeah. here to talk about. Well, we are, because music's good. There's lots yes. of, I, I talk about my interests and in music in in what I do a lot. In fact, a lot of the guys who I see regularly on my work and my clients. Um, <clears throat> so I, I kind of regularly up until the end of last year, I've been working with about five manufacturing companies and, mm. um, and John in, in one of the businesses, he always, we always talk about music cause he, he loves it as well. And we always just talk about band stuff and <clears throat> you, well, know, you find out what people are interested in and yeah, you know, that's absolutely. what you end up. Yeah. I wrote, an, I wrote an article about, um, and I don't know how many people have seen it. I think it might have been on this page, um, but on this group, should I say, about my kind of background, sort of, you know, getting into into music as such. It was more music than CI than anything, really, you know. Yeah. But actually, <coughs> the, the, my ba my background goes right as far back as my kind of my, gra yeah. my grandma who who was really into her music so you know but she used to she used to kind of play in in um she she had a lot of the you know kind of amateur dramatics and she'd play mm. in that and sing so so yeah it's nice to nice to kind of um oh. follow it follow it on and james is doing gcse music so so that's good but wow. but anyway anyway look tell me a bit about the M mini mba because we talked about this a long time ago yeah, when you we had have. I think you'd finished writing it and then you were actually kind of delivering it for you know um up, mm. was it up in manchester or somewhere like yeah that? lucky lucky really uh, more than anything i've been involved in in writing and validating all sorts of training programs over the years um some of which i've written others i've validated within mm. the context of education but because i had the well i i i've been an associate before i joined our the employee you and you and I work together with, um, called Gunner Cook, and they're a mm. professional services business, and they uh, have a kind of a relatively new at the time initiative. This is five years ago, six years ago, uh, developing their consultancy practice. And David, who uh, is one of the partners that I I've got to know well, again, funnily enough, worked up in Liverpool um, at the big FE College up there. Okay. Um, he asked me to write a leadership program on the basis mm -hmm. that if the program could get validated through Chester University, mm -hmm. that we could have work off the back of it. And yes. uh, would I yeah. be interested in writing the program from scratch, starting with what has wide, large, widely be called a mini MBA? And yeah. These are uh, qualifications that anyone can work towards. Um, that will count as the first year of your MBA program. So the idea of it being flexible um, so that you can fit it around your employed work, but also um, sort of much cheaper than doing a full MBA from any yeah. of the main yeah. Red Brick University or wherever. So that's what we did. And, and I, but, uh, but uh, kind of whilst I was self-employed, I started writing what I felt was um, how I deliver training based on my consultancy practice. Mm -hmm. So he, mm -hmm. he gave me the opportunity to do the first three days of the program. And there was a five day program in its entirety. 
the the Thursday was was uh, was on marketing originally, mm -hmm. and the Friday was going to be on 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 business and accounting. <clears throat> so the idea being is that my colleague Stuart would talk to them about cash flow forecasts and how to interpret those and 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 what are your responsibilities in a business if you hold the title of a director um, and such like. And Matt would wrote a marketing day around how to look at digital online marketing and how to develop your strategy, basically. And mm -hmm. and I was given th the first three days and I sort of said yes to all three. And I played into the fact that I could take them through a sort of a leadership development process on a Monday, introduce them all and work with them on a Monday. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and then we called that leadership in action. I called it leadership in action. Okay. And on the Tuesday, we did um, a piece around excellence in process and projects. Um, the reason why we kept it a broad title is that I wasn't going to give people um, what you and I think of as being Lean Six Sigma tools on its own. I was going to no. use other pro other tools and approaches. And then the third day, I did around strategy. Um, what I wasn't interested in doing was writing. Uh, a strategy or doing a pastel or a swat or anything like that. I think people write those all the time. The challenge is how do you put that into practice? Yeah. So I talked a yeah. lot about the practicalities of, of change programs and how do you build a guiding team and what is the theory around change and how do you put your strategy into practice? So, um, and I developed a, an approach to training, which I've probably I've been doing it over the years until someone said, try and formulate how you work, Tim. I never thought of it this way, but I always um, approach training in terms of tools, theory and practice. Mm. So I can, mm. well, I'll talk about one of the tools in a minute. I'll share, you know, we can put it on the screen. Yeah, the reason yeah. I do that is because when you're teaching people in a, in a, in a school or FE or university setting, you have to think about um, how people learn, you know, and we're, exactly. we're just understanding how, not how well you're teaching, but how well people are learning. That's the judgment, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And in order to do that, you have to do something called chunking, which is a classic assessed criteria for teachers <laughs> and saying, don't spend too long on one subject, basically. Mm, like, don't don't frighten your brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, and and thinking about how people learn learning styles and thinking yeah. about how people absorb information so i probably developed the approach through that so what i would do is because it was an academic it had academic rigor the program mm -hmm. <clears throat> i had to i had to base my teaching in, in academia and say i'm using this theory it comes from this text and here's right. how I'm training people on it. And the reason why it's this level of program, you know, level five being a degree program, level seven being postgraduate, basically, yeah. and the steps yeah. in between. Um, how how is how does this bit of theory relate to the type of training that that person is on if he or she is on a level five or six or seven program? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and and in sense, what I did was we wrote the mini mba that launched and gained traction quite quickly mm. it was a marketing was sold through a company up in the northwest mm. who very kindly mm. uh well they they were working in partnership with gunner cook um and i can leave the link in the description below if you like yeah so yeah yeah uh, they're yeah, called in good. professional development in pd um, yeah and what so, kind of and, what kind of people did you did you get on the program what okay. what sort of um, you know all sorts for the mini mba there were a lot of people that were senior in the organization uh, uh and they would either be um mds or ceos owner manager if you like of a business mm -hmm. um often they hadn't done the formal management training before yeah um, yeah so this may have been the first time they sat down in a room since they left the after doing their A-levels or whatever, mm. -levels. Mm. and um, the mini MBA had a lot of people that you were having to give them practical tools in order to apply. So one of the one of the one of the unique 
things about the program where we're all practicing consultants we do it as a day job so we have we have um uh, we can tell an anecdote of how something's worked. We can give you the theory about why it works, and we can give you the tools so you can go and do it yourself. Do it absolutely. I don't. I don't know about you, but I prefer to give somebody that background and that ability so that they can do it themselves. Because what is the point in, yeah. in doing that, teaching them, and then just expecting people to, you know, get you yeah. back every time? Because I just think it, it makes so much difference if they can do it themselves. Yeah. You know, doesn't it? Yeah. No matter what environment or what level you're 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 teaching. So so yeah, excellent. Okay. Lucky for we're us, gonna... though, lucky for us. They were we did end up writing a director's programme as well. Did you? Pitched that, pitched that people that were stepping into those roles within businesses um um and uh, quite often moving into positions where they're managing managers or uh, or um, or ma and or managing budgets right um, and then we did we did a couple of other offshoots of the program one for non-exec directors um which you know for people quite often that were at the other end of their career and looking yeah to, yeah NEDs. To do that. yeah and we did a few we did i did a strategy and a leadership program that were two days each so there's lots of work from that. I did about, I used to meet about 35, 40 people a month. Um, you did. You you kind of, I think, because you did some stuff in London as well with them, yeah, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we did it regularly in Chester and Manchester. That was it, Chester. I was thinking it was, yeah. And then yeah. we started doing it in Birmingham. Mm, mm. Yeah, you were, ne you were never at home, were you, then, <laughs> at that point? Hey, listen, I'm just going to welcome... Fun, eh? We've got, yeah, exactly. We've got, hang on, we've got a few people that I want to say hello to. Hang on a yeah. second. So, so we've got, we've got Tom. This is Tom, Tom Stanhope, who, who actually introduced me to, to this app that we're, or this uh, platform that we're using at the moment for um, the, 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 for the live stream. And actually, so I don't know whether you've seen many of these, but but this this right. is Cap this is Captain Haddock. This is Chris, our very my very own Chris, our very own Chris, who actually oh, yeah. has, he's um so he he's my wordsmith. He writes all I, I basically send text to him for our um social media posts and he he kind of crafts his wisdom and and magic across them and and yeah. what have you. So so yeah, Chris yeah, yeah. Chris has just been to a funeral today. So I hope hope it was all right. I hope it was all right, Chris. It should anyway. We'll talk later. But um, did we want? Oh, did you want to show these little nuggets then on screen? Yeah, why not? Can we do that. Go on, right. Flash give one me up one. I'll talk about it. Give me one second. So I want to make sure I won't be able to see. Let's actually. Here we go. Here we go. This should this should bring on the on the on the stream then, Tim. Can you see that? Oh, all nice. right. Yeah, it's a great one. So. Here is a, a, a tool that I use. I mentioned I use tools theory practice. Mm -hmm. So here is a tool that I use. Um, I use it in my coaching practice. Um, I'm using it with a colleague, of, well, a client of mine who has a team of 18 people. Um, she's the owner manager of the business, um, but finds the symptoms of which are that she is dealing with problems a, a lot of the time that people could deal with themselves. Mm. People are going to directly to her because she's the business owner um, instead of to the manager of the practice. Um, typically, when I bring this up in the mini MBA, it's on usually it's on day three, in fact. So it's on the it's on the strategy deployment element of the program. So mm. that is to say when you're developing your teams and you're looking at your HR strategy, um, what are the symptoms that that mean um, businesses are reliant on very uh, uh, kind of uh, routine approaches to work? Mm. And often this comes down to the people and the behavior in the business. So I'll ask people how big their teams are that they work in. And yeah. quite often I'll say of those team team members, you'll have some people that function above the above the level. Go on, can you hear me? Oh, hang on, Tim. I seem to have lost the sound. 
I've lost your sound. Let's just let's just take that off the stream. Can you hear me okay? I can't we can't hear you. Sorry, Tim. I don't know what's happening. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's back on. Here we go. Hang on. Just a minute. Back on. What happened? Could you not hear me? No. How weird. How weird. Must be the Sorry. Wind. I think it it's just... the wind, you know. Well, it's, it's not in this house. Really. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about outside. I know. I'm so kidding. Honestly. <laughs> oh my goodness. I reckon you're right. It probably is. Richard, University of Reading have actually they're shutting down tomorrow because of the, really? the bad weather. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Everybody's battening down those hatches. Right. I'm going to share that back on screen anyway. So give me a second. Oh no, not me. Oh, flipping heck. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's me on the screen. One second. Da, 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 da. There, back. Ah. There we are. Okay. Can I carry on. Go on. Go on. Yeah. 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 So when I got when I asked uh, people in the room which of their team are operating above the line, the midpoint line, in other words, things happen because of you or whether they're functioning below the line, things happen to you. Mm. Normally, uh, you can start to understand the basic different behaviours in a team. And quite often, the people who function in a way that suggests that things happen to them are often uh, ones that uh, dump a problem in, on someone's desk and indicate helplessness, or yeah. typically give a problem but maybe they watch to see how you fix it, but they mm. don't often learn themselves unless mm. they're able to next rung up, describe a problem and ask for help to solve it. And often when we go into a business, we often are at the, at the lower rungs of the ladder. We're trying to mm. work out what it is that we need to do. Yeah, and yeah, we yeah. might ask for help or we might ask for guidance. And quite yeah. often these people who function below the ladder they just need a bit of a bit of a, a nudge bit of a you know why don't you try and suggest things you know why mm. rather than me give you the answer mm. typically mm. which is what i normally find when people call up um is why can't they uh begin trying to work out their uh, the problem themselves maybe you encourage them to make mistakes so that they can then develop and learn different strategies Mm. And often the people, mm. once they reach the midpoint of the ladder, they might start to behave as if things happen because of them. So they recognize that it's up to them in order to instigate something, maybe in this case to generate options and ask for a decision if they don't feel mm. comfortable making it themselves. Mm. Or even mm. better, provide options with their own recommendations. Yeah. Typically, business owners experience this and i'll come on to the next slide in a minute mm. when mm. they often are seem to be the arbiter the answer to all the questions because they may have founded that business and started it and they don't want to relinquish control to perfectly capable uh, members of their team people yeah and quite yeah. often people don't say hang on a minute what do you think will work or what did we do last time or how did you do with that customer before? Mm. And mm. so people don't know to step forward and suggest things. And it's one of the first signs of, of change in the organization when you can encourage people to start behaving as if they were above the line rather than below the yeah, line. Totally. Does that make sense? Totally. I, I totally agree. And I, I tend to talk about this myself, but not quite as fluently. <laughs> but it's it's true, you know, and, and I think it, it they you have um, what do they call it? The the iceberg of ignorance yeah. as well, you know, where you've where you've actually got the, the iceberg where I can't remember the percentage breakdown, but where people who, you know, kind of like mostly like the hierarchy they know 20 20 percent of what's going on 
Mm. But all the actual stuff that's going on below the water, like the actual iceberg itself, mm. the biggest, biggest proportion is hidden because people don't let on, do they? And it might just be that that person at the top isn't, is, isn't, isn't necessarily approachable. It just mm. it depends where you're working, doesn't it? You know, like you say, if it's an owner manager business, or if even if it's the kind of organization that's grown and the the kind of the person at the top has has just kind of got got used to be, yeah. things being in a certain way, and that person and their team being in a certain you know acting in a certain way. And I think it happened. Well, I, was, I met a lady this week who was in her mid twenties, and she said she yeah. left her last employer because um she wasn't allowed to get on with things herself he would he or he would micromanage a group micromanage. and that's a classic indication that 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 you know when when everything runs through the person at the top it it creates a very you know it, it's a very limiting approach to mm. growing a business um you know there are times when people need to ask questions before they press go you know but actually, if 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 you can encourage your teams to be clear about the things that you want them to just get on and do, yeah, and then yeah. perhaps to have a discussion and forge agreement and consensus on the things that they need to get by in an agreement for, mm. then they might meet, feel more confident in their role and they might begin trying things. You'll exactly. know because they might not always get it right, but encourage yeah. them to to keep trying and learn on that and yeah uh, they will be in a better position the next time they face that problem and it does and it means as well that that they're not just kind of um having to come to that that manager or that owner or whoever it is for every single thing so it means that like you say they can get on with their job and that yeah. person's life should be a little bit easier because actually they can trust that's the yeah. word isn't it that's trust. My, I, I use yeah. empowerment, but trust is also kind of on a line with that one. I just think trust and empowerment, mm. the, the two go <laughs> hand in hand, and it's just making sure that, that people do feel that they're trusted because I yeah. think you get much more out of, out of the people you're working with if they can feel that they're being trusted. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Did you want to go oh, on to the I next? This, uh, if, I pick, if I've got a group of, of operators or perhaps mm. in, a, in a manufacturing environment or or junior staff, then I'll pitch this in a way that suggests that their team leader m might be struggling for time because mm. they're always dealing with other people's problems mm. or um, might feel compelled to fix the problem because they know the answer. And of course, that's the first thing you, you tackle when you're stepping into a more senior position is you know, you're no longer the expert because yeah. you're one step removed from that. So it's actually yeah. your job just to ask really good questions and let people do the work, do the work themselves and learn from their experience. Because mm. because don't you think that people do go into kind of management roles and and like you said they don't they don't they like you say they don't understand they don't always they're not taught to be managers they yeah. they work they was a lot of people work their way up an organisation they're not taught to be a manager no it just and of course there's always that that um, that yearning to be one of the team still and actually it's quite it's very different isn't it being one of the team and being a manager you know it's it's just um it, it does make things trickier but actually yeah. l learning like you said about learning styles and understanding that all the things that you knew before yeah you're going to know them still but you just need to bolt all these new you know kind of leadership skills on top of them don't you yeah and it's not actually about you anymore it's mm. not about the fact that even if you've been doing it a long time and you know how to fix the machine quickly or you know what that customer really likes it's not the point that you down tools and then go and start doing that person's job it's more important that they learn how to do it and that you stay you know back in your role and do try and do your role better yeah exactly did you want to go on to the next one so we yeah. normally I normally I'm kind of leading quite nicely into the next one. Yeah, let's do it. Hang on one second. So, if I can do this, well, there we go. Much like the last tool, I tend to talk about this as a as a bit of theory, actually, rather than the, than a tool, 
the last mm. one's a tool because I can get people to use it and they can they can pl plot their team on the ladder. You know, they can ask them, they can reflect on what helped them move up the ladder, whether mm. it was confidence, mm. experience, or perhaps having the right leader that encouraged them to climb up the ladder. And yes. in much the same way, this is a great way of holding the mirror up to uh, senior leaders uh, to ask them if they're on or in the business, if you heard that phrase before, on, mm. on meaning you're on in it, but looking forward to the future of the company and how you might develop it rather mm. than in the business when you're getting stuck in the weeds the whole time you're dealing with small problems and firefighting yeah and uh, you know which is why quite often the visibility of leaders sometimes change but quite often something called leadership slump will come back time and again and it comes from this this uh, this uh, human characteristic we have that um if we feel comfortable doing something we'll probably go back and keep doing it if we yeah. are if we're the owner of a business and then we um we feel most comfortable doing sales because that's the, that's the thing that always ex we always excelled at quite often you can find the owner of a business with the sales team because he or she will be going yeah. to see their old old work buddies you know they'll be uh, talking about the clients they know and they'll be doing things which are comfortable to them. And that's a sign, I think, and uh, it's referred to as leadership slump. So the mm. reason why there's writing up the sign is because management slump happens um, w with, a, with a very inward focused, quite often with a great deal of, of micromanaging at times and maybe slightly righteous behavior. You know, I, I know this client, I know this customer, so I should really be dealing with them even yeah. if it's not my job anymore yeah because uh, they don't want to let go they don't want yeah. to let go i do they actually know some dudes like that <laughs> and and therefore um they're actually stifling the business's progress because what they should be doing of course is getting back into their own office or back into their own role and doing the things that they're probably avoiding which is normally where a conversation starts that you know what are you avoiding and why sort of thing yeah yeah exactly but building okay. trust as you mentioned in the last conversation we had just yeah, now yeah. building trust happens when we are altruistic in our approach and we're more empathetic perhaps and we have a little bit more resilience you know we don't always know the answers but we're prepared to ask the questions of people around us perhaps you know it starts with better listening skills and quite often uh, a lot of the things that I coach with leaders is listening skills <laughs> rather than jump to the conclusion or the way that you would have done it work out and help them to solve it their way yeah because otherwise they'll just come back to you when they have the next problem and they'll expect you to solve that because we're, yes. we're not stupid you know we're, we're creatures of habit if we know if I know that Liz will give me the right answer tonight i'm going to come back to you tomorrow night and ask you to help me with the next absolutely say so work it out yourself tim yeah if it makes your job i've seen it a lot i worked in a corporate few before me and you were working together and and exactly that where you know there were people that were being relied upon in a in a, in leadership roles and this is multiple people yeah. in different leadership roles when they wouldn't allow or they just got their team had just got used to kind of asking them those questions and and it just seemed ridiculous when they and they got so used to it part of it i thought was because of the fact that they wanted to feel wanted mm. but i think a lot of it was be, you know the the actual staff they weren't allowing them to make those decisions for themselves and because yeah. it was a big corporate environment you know it it kind of um it just spiraled out of control really yeah. to be honest but but that wasn't the kind of environment i wanted to stay in i wanted to be in the environment we've been talking about you know which is getting yeah. people to to sort of like think think differently and think for them think for themselves you know because I don't, I don't see. I, I, like I say, I'm not quite as eloquent as you, my love. But yeah, I, I like to help people and not just 
get them to yeah, just well, go on that same route. So what I normally tend to do is, um, you know, I see day one of the mini MBA as an opportunity to hold the mirror up and ask people about their own behavioural styles. Mm. Normally, I do a psychometric test or two of sorts. Okay. What I'm oh, do you do? You're get... still doing DISC, aren't you? Because I was talking about yeah, DISC the other week. Yeah, I'm accredited TTI DISC Insights, and and uh, you know, for what it's worth, I know people will find alternatives all the time, but it's still a very powerful tool. So over 30 million people have done DISC Insights, and they've got a very rich database of behavioural types, and it's very well founded. The, the theory is inc uh, well, very well founded. And what it does is it allows you to understand two things. What what is what is my behavioural profile and snapshot, mm -hmm. and 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 how can I use that to improve the effectiveness of what I do? You know, how can I appeal to people that are perhaps different from me, and how can I adapt my behaviour so that I'm well better received by others? Yeah, yeah. You know, so and, uh, you know, Will you I be able to use on, this sir. bit of theory towards the end of day one? Mm -hmm. And I normally use a range of different stories and anecdotes until I can see people nodding in the room. And usually <laughs> when they're nodding, it means I've got them. They recognize I'm talking about them. Um, and uh, at one stage in their lives, uh, they've experienced my leadership slump or they're doing it themselves as we speak. Yes. How many emails have you checked that you really don't need to be checking today? <laughs> but you're doing it because, I don't know, you've got that itchy. Got used right to it. Arm, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to have a look because there's a couple of people that have actually made comments and I couldn't quite see. Is that all right, is that all right Tim, if I just yeah. have, a quick, have a quick look? Hang on. Oh, let me see my little screen. So... Yeah, so Rich, my other half, was was saying about needing a bit of confidence to offer a solution. Mm. Sometimes, so hang on, here we go. So he just said, sometimes just needs a bit of confidence to offer offer us offer offer a solution That's about amazing. things. Definitely. Um, yeah. And there's yeah, Mich Michelle's joined joined us tonight as well. Who I who's, who works with me as well. But um, did you want me to put that back up again? Cause, I, I can, I'm happy to. I just yeah, wanted no, to check it. about it. I mean, I think that's the key thing. I mean, if you ask people, um, what do you need in order to for you to come up with some ideas? It doesn't have to be me. Um, mm. You know, mm. if 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 I'm uh, if I'm trying to be mindful of them, and they are inexperienced in their role, but they don't necessarily want to ask me, I might ask them, who do you know that might give you some ideas? And if that might give you a little bit more confidence in suggesting stuff, then go and ask them. You yeah. have to get used to the idea that you're surrounded by excellent people. It's the best way to think of them. Whenever we're applying CI, we have to assume, we do, that mm -hmm. they've hired the right people. And that those yeah. people might be in the right jobs or thereabouts. They might not be quite in the right seat on the bus, if we use that analogy. But actually, um, all we need to do is give them the opportunity to develop their approach to their work so that they can find better ways of working. And yeah. all we're trying to do, and you and I are the same on this, Liz, is give them a framework and some theory to wrap around that approach. You know, yeah. um, Give them a little nugget or something, let them go away and apply it, come back, how did it go? What went well? What, well, what didn't go well, and how can you improve it? Just keep Classic. going round. Yeah. Keep going round. Tweak, tweak, and improve. Tweak and improve. That's yeah. what we need to do. Now, so normally I actually say forty-five minutes for this, and I would love to talk to you for so for so much longer. Honestly, right, I right. think maybe what I need to do, Tim, is to get you get you back on another we'll do time. Else. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. We've got lots to talk about, haven't we? Yeah. We're done so, already, aren't we? Gosh, it's that time, isn't it? I know, I know, exactly. But look, um, are you all right if I kind of... Oh, hang on. This is weird. Everybody's names come come up in some... I think I need to check I need to check my settings on, on Facebook because... Really? People, yeah, yeah, people have... There's some kind of Russian translation. 
sort of rushing there? Well, I don't, I don't know. I'd have to show you when we're off screen, so I'll show you. It. It's just weird. It's probably just come up on mine. But but anyway, if you're if you're all right with that, listen. I was going to ask you. So so the link. Would you? Um, are you able to provide people? I mean, obviously it's a it's paid, but uh, can you give? provide people with disc training because I was talking about this the other week because I was saying about disc training and I was talking about bell bin and, and learning styles but um I was there was there's another insights training that yeah. I had but I've had bell, I've had um, disc as well is that something that you can help every everybody with if they need if they want it I can, yeah but I'm like I'm happy to have a have a have a conversation with with, with anyone you know I'm yeah um all I can do is if 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 what they're trying to it's understanding what they're trying to solve if they understand what problem they're trying to solve then you can suggest you know what tool you use to fix it with you know yeah you, yeah exactly i was and gonna that, and that's the best best way and even if it's just uh i need to understand this better or you can go away and try and do that and mm. then you can try something until you're ready quite often people i coach want to develop a uh, better knowledge of a problem and understand it before they go away and start doing things themselves. Yeah, yeah. They need the confidence to go away and think, well, you know, I can try a few things. And once I know that works and I'll do more of it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, but um, what are, you were going to, you were saying that before that you'd be able to put the mini MBA link up as well. Yeah. You'd be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll put the bis bear in mind that it won't have it won't have my name on it these days because I haven't been delivering that training for a while, little while. Um, but it is still I your it's a bit got of your mark on it, hasn't it? Yeah, you know, IV stuff on it the other week, and none of it's changed. It just it's taught by three or four different people mm. these days, mm. and it's taught online and face to face. And to be honest, Liz, I enjoy the face to face stuff. I know you do. I know you do. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, we'll share. We'll share those links later. Lovely. And just to say, Tim, it's been a pleasure having you yeah. on. We can Likewise. we can stick around for a few minutes afterwards. But I'm yeah. going to end. I'm going to end the stream now, and I've got to stop Perfect. sharing one second. But yeah. Good night, everybody, and I shall see you next week. Thank you, bye Tim. Bye. Absolute star. See you guys. Bye.